Is the Toronto market up or down? Are real estate prices in Toronto up or down? There's conflicting evidence. Let's take a look. So, this is Yossi Kaplan, your friendly or sometimes not too friendly Toronto realtor. <laughs> Just kidding, always friendly. And I want to take a look about what's going on in the Toronto market. Price is coming up, price is coming, going up, price is going down. Um, the real estate market, is it up, is it down? We have fake money in the um, economy in BC and Ontario. We have uh, all kinds of regulations. We have all kinds of stuff happening. So let's take a look. Toronto market price is up or down and what to do about it is a good time to buy is it not good time to buy is a good time to sell is it not a good time to sell okay Yossi Kaplan Toronto Realtor let's start right here Yossi Kaplan twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan this is where you find all my tweets before I go with the market analysis for the Toronto market up or down a couple quick announcements I have a bunch of new listings ones on MLS right now some are assignments that private consume my website or call me to ask about them uh, this one is DNA 3, 1030 King Street West. we got a beautiful one bedroom available. That's a listing on um, MLS. <clears throat> it's all on Twitter. If you want to see it on yossi.searchrealty.co, there's a link on uh, Twitter. Same listing, just a different uh, interface. I like this one better. Realtor.ca just doesn't cut it. And if you want to see the uh, thing that's condos.ca, you can see it right here. <coughs> also very nice. If you want to grab the links, just go to my twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan and grab the links uh, right from there. It's the easiest thing to do. It. I'll put in the comments too for you. Okay, that's Realtor. That's uh, Yossi.searchrealty.ca. Busy day. There'll be a lot of beeps. That's all right. Uh, that's the unit. You got to log in. You can see it on condos.ca, okay? Um, this is my YouTube. YouTube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. So I put... Um, Two pre-listing videos. One is for the um, the summit at 701 King. We're still working on that one. That was going to be phenomenal. Okay, so you can see it here, and I basically tell you what's going on. I take Hello, it friends, outside and inside. Today take it the out. Summit at King West, King of Bathurst, and uh, we got uh, outdoor balconies and something. Uh, and that's a construction there, site. Gardener and the lake. New one. Uh, so that's coming up soon. For now, this one is the one I just showed you. This one is available. We take an offer right this now. Is Yossi, 1030 King in the court amenities. There's a for integrated kit street. Okay, so that yeah. is uh, that is the DNA three listing uh, listed on MLS right now. 4899, unit 215, 30 King Street West. Yossi Kaplan, salesperson, search realty. This is me. Okay. Uh, so that was the intro. If you want more information, more units, uh, go to UrbanRealtyToronto.com, my website for many, many years. I got lofts for you. I got pre-construction. I got assignments. I got two bedrooms. I got one bedroom. Got all kinds of stuff uh, happening. Uh, did a bunch of at uh, West, including some really nice penthouses. Best pre-construction value in town right now is at West. Okay. Some analysis. What's up at Fashion House? King West, Queen West, on and on and on. I got some nice assignments at 488 University. Not the cheapest, but one of the best. Uh, stockyards, rental guarantees, how to invest, what's going on in Agra, on and on and on. So that's that. If you head to YorkvilleLuxuryRealEstate.com, also my site for a long time, you will find the more million dollar up, usually I put listings, assignments, pre-construction, really nice stuff because I think that this stuff deserves kind of its own little corner. So there it is, okay? Uh, that's 1030, DNA3 I just showed you, that's MLS, okay, YossiKaplan.com, we also have some townhomes in Brantford starting at 4495, deposits as low as 35,000, this is our close, this is moving June 7th in three weeks, 2019, so you can get come and grab yourself some units here, they're very good, they're right across from the giant school, uh, so lots of jobs there, lots of people need homes, uh, and everything else that is really cool I post here. So come visit often, it changes. And uh, the best thing to do is get information. I want to go on your mailing list and you'll know everything you need to know. Okay, uh, that's condos.ca, we looked at that. Okay, let's get into the business. So first of all, um, I'm gonna use uh, some trip reports, I'm gonna use some uh, condos.ca, all that stuff. When you go to condos.ca, which is um, becoming like the de facto site, it really beats anything else out there right now. Even the site from the realtors themselves, that's us, me, all 50,000 of us paying the fees. But they got a mistake today. Uh, it's showing a 42.3% increase on condo values year over year. Now, 
Uh, it's about, you know, right now, that this is dynamic. That it, they dynamically generate this, so there's some programming error here, obviously. And based on four recent sales, you know, that's, that's, that's not good, guys. you got to do it based on last 50 sales. And Toronto is so large, averages are really not good in such a big city that you can find stuff at 2,000 a foot and 500 a foot. So, dangerous. But here, this is a little better, and it shows you that the average here uh, went from 719 to 736. Uh, based on how many sales here? Uh, 18,234 listeners. So I'm not sure how they measure. Uh, do they measure by the actual sold price or by asking? How do they do it? I don't know. But it's a good enough uh, um, rule of thumb kind of measure to show you. There was a huge increase in uh, 2015 to 2016. A crazy giant increase in 2017. A significant increase in 2018. And now we kind of going slower. Okay. So it's 2.46 percent. Now these are these are averages. Look at these average here, 12.81 uh, percent for 2016. 20 or well, 26 percent for 2017. Uh, That's nuts. Okay, 2018 number comes with uh, just under 10 percent, and this is three. So, you know, you can't you can't expect like the market to go up by 20 or 30 percent year after year it just it just makes no sense if you were thinking this way you should not be investing in condos you should buy candy and watch cartoons okay don't do it or give your money to me and i'll show you some more reasonable investments okay so there are mistakes that uh, programmers make there are mistakes that investors make but you know the one mistake that you cannot make is toronto is a giant destination everyone wants to live in toronto uh, the quality of life here, it may not be perfect, but it's way better than other places. I'd rather be here than any other place in the world. This is the best place in the world to live. We are so lucky and grateful and blessed to be in this city and to be in this country. Okay? So remember that. Now, it comes with a price. No place is perfect. That's totally okay. That's what, you know, evolution is for. We're working on it for many years. But that's where we're at, Okay? Um, so now when I type in a certain neighborhood, there's no mistake. So when I type in downtown to condos.ca, uh, it shows me 8.2% year over year. Now, again, I don't know the exact how it's uh, based, but below it shows uh, average price per square foot based on 5,413 recent sales in downtown. So that's good. That's a very large number, 5,400 sales downtown. And they came with this. So the price currently is $37 over what it was uh, last year, which is only 4%, but it's $37 bucks a foot, okay? Uh, and before, go away, uh, you can see here, uh, there was a $66 a foot jump, and here we had a $150 or some dollar a foot jump. And here we have just a hundred dollar for them. That's huge, okay? Fifty-eight hundred listings, sixty-eight hundred listings, seventy-four hundred listings. So you can see there was more volume, more speed of transaction, more money in the system uh, in these three years. And now, but mind you, we only in May, so year over year. So I guess it's rolling back three hundred sixty-five days or twelve months or whatever it does. I'm not sure what the programming is like in there. But nonetheless, it's still significant, 4%, uh, not even June 1st, half the year, we can end up with 8%, which is this was actually showing us here. It shows a, a rate of 8.2% year over year. So to me, I understand year over year, uh, May 15th today to last May 15th or 16th last year. With an average, average price, of 950 uh, per square foot to a thousand square foot unit will run you average 950. Now here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of areas on this map, although it's the downtown, some areas will be worth more and some less. And large units usually sell for lower dollar per foot and smaller units sell for higher. Give you an example. Uh, you go down here to Thompson for the 450 square foot units, and they go for like five, say 550, five to 550. So that's 
11 to 1200 foot okay so much higher 30 percent more than this number but if you're going to go to an older building a 40 year old building uh, maybe that was built uh, somewhere not that desirable I don't know maybe on St. Clair or like not right on the subway you know maybe that building would be 700 bucks a foot so that's your average coming from uh, and we all know the new construction these days sell for 12 to 15 and I got uh, BIG King West here 16 to 18 a foot um, for ADH University assignments it's 14 a foot give or take 481 University across the street, 1650 a foot. The last uh, price list I got, you know. Um, 543 Richmond is less. That's a good deal still. Rush condos, I think sold out. Maybe you get a place there for like 14. You can see, you can see what I mean. Even in the downtown itself, there's a wide range, okay. And don't forget that this number here does not, does not include the pre-construction. If we were to include the pre-construction. Um, and the information does exist, but not publicly. You gotta pay for it, you can get it. Um, you too can pay for it, I believe. Um, then you'll see a much higher price per foot. So the market is saying, okay, I'm willing to pay more for new construction because I anticipate it will be, will be worth more in the future, okay? It's kind of like the stocks, they say the stocks like showing you the price that they anticipate it to be six months from now. Kind of along the same line, the same logic here, okay? so it's a Prediction of future. Now, if I uh, put here uh, King West area, okay, so I'm just going to remove downtown just so we have, uh, okay, that's cool. But where, is my where are my numbers here? I'll do it again. Okay, King West. Uh, by the way, these videos, none of these videos are scripted. None of them are edited. It's like if I were to meet you on the street or we have a meeting, I'll talk to you about what's available. I'll just, this is it, okay? This is Yossi. So there you go. Is the Toronto market up or down? Is it up or down? Well, King West averaging at the moment, uh, it's not giving me that big number here either, but it, it is giving me 981, so $31 a foot more than downtown. Why? I be, why? Like my guess is good as yours, and my guess is King West more desirable, marketed better, kind of got less uh, available, not as busy as downtown, and less units because if it's got less units, supply and demand, less supply and the demand is higher because the quality here of uh, living is higher, and it's also kind of made itself into a desirable neighborhood, so people pay more for it, um, and I you know, pay more in rent too, four bucks a foot. Not bad, okay. So you can see here, we get uh, ten plus so about the same increase, but the same increase here, but the same increase, uh, and about you know just under four percent here. So we're looking about, and but a lot less condos obviously. It's a much smaller area and way less buildings, so the supply is shorter. Okay, that's why the price is a little higher. Um, but what you can see is it's it's moving along fine. But when I was logging into uh, condos.ca maybe two or three weeks ago. I saw they changed it, but they had like this big number, say the dollar per foot in Toronto, and I kid you not, that thing went up and down by about thirty or forty dollar a foot. So, like, how is it possible? Well, how so? <laughs> is the Toronto market up or down? I want to know. And how is it possible? I want to know because I'm Yossi. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. So, my guess is this. My theory is this. Number one, like you saw. It could be uh, an error, and that's a human error. That's my listing. That's the average here. 42.3%. That's a mistake. That just cannot be, okay? I, I, don't, I don't buy that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's just, and there was no 40%. There's like 4%. So, uh, maybe it's a decimal. Not even. It's, 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 something's going on here. Uh, so it's like a human programmatical error, and that's a human error. The machine's not making the error. The machine doesn't. Do, machine has no brain. It's the humans tell it what to do. Okay, the machine just does whatever you feed it. So maybe they still use the punch cards, whatever it is, the code. There's a problem there. But once you fix it, um, there was still some going on in the price. It went down deeply and then back up. So number one could be human error. Number two. Could be that we went into a slump, and the way that the data was measured, 
maybe it was measured um, only a week or a certain area or not enough uh, sample size to give you that error. Or maybe it was. Maybe, maybe for a week or two, prices did go down so much. I, I didn't hear about it, but you never know. And maybe there was a dip in the market. Either way, uh, when I look at that long term here, which is a year over year, okay, uh, which I'm most interested in here, um, it's doing fine. Now, it went up a little bit too fast. So, real estate should not go up by 25.79%. Okay, it just should not. If you're the government, you should like, maybe 8 is enough, maybe 10 is enough, maybe 15 is enough, but 26%. Just not, it doesn't help anyone. Okay, it helps the government collecting more taxes, but it doesn't help me or you. So me, if I were the mayor of Toronto or the mayor of all Canada, I want the prices of, you know, just to beat inflation just a little bit. That's good enough for me. That means that my money is working for me in the real estate and I can get some income out of it. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to make small gains over a long amount of time, amounting to very nice gains over 10 or 20 or 30 or a lifetime. That's what I'm here for, okay? Now... I know how to flip, we do a lot of assignments, buy and sell, whether we buy the pre-construction from the developer, flip it to someone else, assign it, or maybe the assign, um, people that bought the pre-construction ask me to assign it for them like I'm doing at 488 uh, University or the other sites you've seen here, Yorkville, or maybe here, the assignments that you see that I post here. And mind you, I post the assignments in a very generic and general way. So when you come to any of these, uh, posts it doesn't say exactly what's available because the, some developers don't like it so it's general and then when you see it just send me a quick email from the contact form and you'll basically i'll tell you okay i got this and that i can tell you on an email but i just don't want to post it publicly like that because some developers don't like it they feel threatened by it someone else is undercutting them even if they sold out okay so we'll respect their wish here it's fine um but what's happening is the market up and down I think the market is up slightly, and I think it's going to keep coming up slightly because real estate is a tool to hedge against inflation. What's inflation? Inflation, like I've shown you in other videos, is that the value of your dollar just keeps going down. The price is going up, but you're not making more money, so the 40 or 80 or 160,000 you make a year just buys you less and less and less and less, okay? The economy is rigged. It's designed to do this. Cannot beat it um, unless you did a whole other thing and you start a whole new economy, which is not allowed, basically. It's illegal, okay? So that's why the war on the Bitcoin, that's why the war on anyone's trying to change the system. The system is so big and powerful and rich, he wants it to play this way. So we're going to play the way what likes to play. That's totally fine. We can do it. And we can beat the system in its own game. Okay? That's what we're here to do. Now, <clears throat> when the market's easy and everything's going up, you can go to your cousin who's a real estate agent, doesn't know anything about real estate, just have the license, and you'll do great. But once the market is unique like it is now, when you see giant gaps of price in the same city, sometimes within, you know, a kilometer away or even two blocks away, then you got with someone like me, and that happens every time the market's like in fluctuation. My phone's ringing off the hook in the email. The reason is because people go, okay, we're going to talk to this Yossi guy. He knows what he's talking about. I've seen him on uh, YouTube. I heard him speak at a seminar. I talked to him on the phone. I met him. Like, he helped a friend of mine. Like, that guy's is serious about real estate. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, uh, when you are serious about real estate, with all the respect to everyone else, Come to the pros, okay? When you need a plumbing problem fix, get the plumber. And when you get an investment real estate, you come to me because that's what I do. I do real estate for investors and for buyer sellers, okay? Pre-construction, assignments, resale. That's it. That, that, that's what it is, okay? Um, we do work with construction, by the way, and we do work with lots of developers. I just don't advertise it. They're, they're just like a network thing. You know, I'm very old school. I have a very good network that I can just look at my phone. There's like 12,000 numbers in there. I kid you not. Yes, I have a password and um, I know who to call. So if you need something done, there's always a name that is uh, positive and good and professional that will give us a good answer. And that's that's the idea of a network. 
<coughs> old school from overseas like me. <laughs> All right. So is the market up or down? So now we're going to look at the Treb stuff. Now, God bless Treb. you got to do better on your site design, please. And here there's this two little li li links here. Historic report. It's not broken this month. It was last month, if you remember. It comes up with this. And then the other one comes up with, uh, I got this one open already, with this one. Those are the links at the bottom there of MarketWatch. So if we review the historic stats, the average, and this is interesting because you can see how the numbers don't all match up. They do not. It's very interesting. It's kind of a, it gives you a general idea, but you cannot pinpoint it exactly because the way it's measured changes and because some information you get this information you get you know after the year is done but what you see in uh, in the other reports there's, there's like a fancy report here that's kind of I don't know if it's live data but it seemed to be to the month okay so I'll go over these let's go over these together but I want to start here this only comes up once a year, so it's a good kind of point of reference. And we're just about uh, six weeks, maybe, from like half year, from July 1st, right? So we reached the peak of price in 2017 with 92,000 uh, units sold. Now, this is Toronto resale. does not include the assignment and does not include new construction. The real number is a lot higher. You can see what happened in 2016 and even now 2015. Even 2014, there's like a lot more sales. The number 92,000, 101, 113, back to 92, back to 77, and we'll see what number we get for 2019. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, what you can see is the price peaked. You went by almost $100,000 in 2016 to 822, and 2018 finished with 787. 787. So it's just over 216, but way less than the price of 2017. So I got uh, 50 some thousand dollars less than 2017. And if you look at the graph below here, try to zoom in here. If you look at the graph below here, what you see is that you see like the notch of 2018 is below 2016, but above. Uh, the year before, it. yeah, above 2016. Okay, so not bad. Um, if we if we uh, finish 2019 anywhere between uh, 2016 and the top of that, I'm happy because that will give us a nice like. If you put an imaginary line through these, you know, I want to see like a nice. I want to be around here. I don't know if you can see my mouse uh, on the video, but I want to be around that mark. Okay. Uh, and why is because it's going to give the market a chance to kind of revive itself. And it's going to give a chance to a lot of people that can't get in the market. They're like, man, I know this thing is up. Sometimes like it bounces up a bit. But, you know, we have an immigration policy in Canada that allows for a lot of people with money to come in and buy. That's not foreign buyers. These are immigrants like me, way richer than me. I came with a backpack. That was it. I had nothing when I came here. That was a long time ago. But the people that come now, you know, they come with a million dollar suitcase kind of thing. Maybe it's not cash, but they buy property. So that pushes the market up, but they do not count for non-Canadians. They are Canadians because they went through the process. They got the papers. Now they buy as Canadians. That's a whole other level, right? So they do the 20% deposit, not the 35. Uh, maybe they can get like a, like a better or regular mortgage and so on and so forth. So they're still coming. Um, and these new Canadians have a lot of money, so if I see a dip in the market, buy the dip. I'm going to buy the dip, okay, because it, it's got to do it. Otherwise, there's no economy. Government can't get taxes. The government wants prices to be up because that's how they make the money, by taxing everything, 13% on everything that you buy, and uh, whatever percent here, and whatever percent on anything else, Okay. Even on your used car. So now we're going to go to the market watch uh, detail. So bear with me here. That's very, very important. Okay. So look what happens here. And that's the TREB MLS average price. And it'll give you like calculation, all that. And you can delve in as long as you want all these numbers. I'm not going to do it. This is just nuts. But uh, here, 
the price, uh, the sales activity and the price, the sales up and the price below. So the sales in 2018, again, it's right to left. Try, please make it left to right. It's English. Uh, 7744 sales. Uh, that's what it reported for April 2018. Now, April is a transitionary month, but look at 2019, 9,000 sales. This is only resale, 9,000 sales. You know, like, you heard April was good. April was very good. And the price is $16,000 over. So 2%, because I got, starts with an 8 here, so 2%, numbers in the head, 2% uh, over what it was last. So a lot of people see an opportunity. goes, hey, you know, I can buy this. And that twenty thousand dollars. Don't forget, you only put twenty percent of it, so a fifth of it. So you know, uh, what's a fifth of twenty? It's four. So for four thousand dollar more, the rest sixteen. I'm gonna mortgage that. I can get that same condo I forgot to buy or I didn't buy last year. So maybe that's what's happened here. And you can see here, lots more sales. Nine thousand forty-two. Um, more new listings. Same amount of active listings, slightly less, more or less the same, starts with 18. Average price slightly higher. And average day on market is actually one day less, which, you know, it, it doesn't make any, it doesn't really matter. 2019, the agent could have closed it yesterday, not today, put that date. But it, it's doing okay. Uh, lot, lots more sales. Uh, so the sales ratio is better because people see an opportunity uh, in these and once again if you go to the bottom here there we go uh, you'll see it's good this way I'll put it right in the center right in the center of the screen so I hope I hope uh, everyone can see it uh, but you can see here sales an average price and it, it gives you the 416 to 905 in total okay so the number of sales are total uh, average price should not say total, it should say average, because it's not a total of 1, 3, and 9. This should say average. Okay, so that second point, switch that right and left with the years, and that should say average, not total. Okay, that's average price, 416, 905. It's not total price, it's average price. Uh, but the total sales was 4173 uh, for the detached, 856 for the semi, 1,500 townhomes, and 2,300 uh, condos. But... The surprise is that the 905 love townhouses, obviously detaches number one because that's mostly what it is. It's the vast suburb, the 905. And the detached, 22% uh, of the market, so that's kind of the same. But when you look at the average price, uh, sorry, before I go to the 416, look at the townhouses. 24% of all townhouses are sold are in the 416 and it's by far the largest uh, thing that's sold um, and here 2.6 condo so the townhouse is like I've been saying hot hot commodity even in 905 and they're just really coming up because townhouses are now supplementing and replacing the houses the old houses nobody wants to fix okay uh, the downtown price came down a little bit uh, some of those prices were just insane and I've seen it but the 905, they keep going up, and overall, like they're doing great. So townhouses are very good. Um, the houses were very, very expensive. Uh, this is also interesting. Minus 0, 0.0, okay? Minus 0. How could that be? It just used to be 0. No minus or plus before 0. Uh, it went down a little bit in 905, and you can see that total townhouses did really well. Uh, the condos are always hot commodity because it's affordable. Then if you want to go to see exactly what sold for what prices, you can see here and you can see like the largest demographic of the town of the townhouse, that's what it is, and on and on and on and on. Okay. Uh, but more importantly to understand here, I'm gonna zoom back to the regular size, is that we have lots of activity in the market at a price that is very attractive to a lot of investors, and that's what I think you have seen here. So a lot of investors, first-time home buyers. Parents buying for their children, you know, they're like, this is a good time. It's a good time to buy because the market's kind of flat. I see the unit I want, I'm going to go get it. And I, I can tell you that I've been in multiple multi-offer situations. I mean, not one time, but it happened to me over and over again with resale buyers. Now, I usually work for sellers, 
but I occasionally I work with buyers. It's a lot of fun. You get to go places, meet people like personally and all that stuff. And I usually do that in the Yorkville, King West, Queen West, Financial District. And we focus on very nice units because that's what we like. And it's very busy. And for every offer that we submitted, there were between two and seven other offers. I mean, there's like three to eight offers per condo on the market. As long as they price right, and what I've seen a trend recently is that is the condo is priced reasonably, but the end result is multiple bids at a high price. Okay, so it shows you that people really want these condos, and these are not flipper investors, these are people that are buying to live. Parents buying for the kids to live there, or someone who already worked for a bit there in their 30s and 40s and they buy for themselves. Okay. So that's what we're, you're seeing. Now, who, who is selling? you got to say, okay, well, if these people are buying these condos, who are selling? Well, these people are upgrading. So they lived in these condos for, you know, say three to five years, maybe more, maybe less. But most of these, like three to five years, the last owner. And now they're like, I've made some margin. I made some markup here. I saved some money. Maybe I got married, had family. So I'm going to move to a larger place. So a lot of these people... They need more space because there's uh, another person, um, like a partner or a child or both, or, you know, whatever combination there is, uh, but more people under the same roof. So they need larger space or maybe they have more money. They want to upgrade themselves. You know, they bought a smaller unit and these small units go back into the market for the investors that buy to rent them out and for the first time home buyers. And that connects to what I said at the very beginning that um, a unit like uh, this one that I have on the market is a very good unit because it appeals to these two, uh, these two audiences, which is the first-time buyer. Okay, they just want something cheap. This is under half a million, advertised. And the investor, they want like a good quality product. In this case, it's a King Street address built by Candarell. Just good, good quality, very good building. King car right there. It's all good, Okay. So that's what we looked at today. We, to, today we looked at, did the condo market, did the Toronto market, did the prices of the real estate in Toronto came up or down? And the conclusion is they did not come up 42%. They did come up a little bit. We saw fluctuation through the stat site, this fluctuation. I'm not sure if it's a programmatical error that we have one right here, or maybe it was for real and the market had a bit of a, of a hiccup. But April, for sure, you can see it, and I trust uh, the trap numbers, although I don't like the presentation, I still trust the number that they produce um, because it's, it's kind of a semi-government body, you know, like they, they got to do it right. If they're not doing right, the whole government's in a problem. So I trust these numbers, and you can see there's so many more sales happening with price slightly inching upwards to me, that's a very good sign. People want to buy more. And there, is a, there are enough units to sell. Those will upgrade. And the newcomers usually come in the one bedroom, the bachelor, the easier units to buy. Okay? So that's what I got today. And that's it.